Professor Mike Marnie takes the responsibility to begin the long task to collect and gather the critical host frog. With his son and daughter, he begins the search. Whereabouts? It's there on this branch. This is a tree frog, and the frog that yeah. we're going to be working on is a ground frog. If he can't find a suitable host frog, the project again will be finished before it starts. The problem here is that the gastric breeding frog is a very deep lineage. It's about 50 million years of independent evolution from the other major families of Australian frogs. It's on, a, it's, on its own line. Frogs are shy animals, and being nocturnal are hard to find. The gastric brooding frog was no exception. It was first found by accident in this forest stream in Queensland in 1971. David Lean, now in his 70s, was the first person to collect the species and still vividly remembers that day. Lo and behold, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, you know, I walked the stream bed, uh, rocky stream bed, and I saw frog jumping. Hey, wait a minute, what is going on here? And then that was the reason I just happened to find caught that frog. I, I didn't realize it's a new frog. A second species of gastric brooding frog was later discovered by a team headed by Mike Marnie. By 1984, there was this great fear that we'd lost the gastric brooding frog and then we discovered a second species. We went up to this um, stream by day and uh, put my arm down and went under this boulder thinking, well, there's crayfish and there's who knows what under this boulder. So lo and behold, that's, that's what it was, uh, the second species of gastric brooding frog. So I have the dubious uh, sort of record of having described a frog, found a new species, and it was known for two years before it went extinct. The difficult search for a host frog continues. But almost as soon as the project is underway, Andrew French moves to the United States to work for a private research group. The team trying to resurrect Lazarus is now spread around the world. From San Diego, Andrew monitors progress and to help him stay abreast of everything, enlists the talents of Dr. Ji Tong Gao, a scientist he works closely with and who he implicitly trusts to do the job. Ji Tung has worked in cloning science for many years in China, as well as Australia. With his technical skills in cell manipulation and his deep understanding of cloning, he brings essential skills to the project. We've worked together as a team um, to look at cloning a number of different species. So his, his involvement, because I'm, I'm located over here in San Diego at the moment, is very valuable in, it, in that he provides some hands-on skills. Finally, after 18 months of research and field trips, Mike Marnie chooses the Great Barred River Frog as the host. We've chosen the Great Barred River Frogs because genetic work tells us that they're towards the base of this lineage. They also have a long, long lineage, and they're, so they're down there. The other thing about them is, is um, they also lay, lay very large eggs. And one thing about the gastric brooding frog we know is it had large yolky eggs. We need a large yolky egg to support the early embryonic and then tadpole development of the gastric brooding frog. So we had to find a frog that's not endangered and that we wouldn't be impacting on by collecting females in the wild from which to get eggs. The biggest problem with the great barred river frog as the chosen host is that she only drops eggs once a year in the summer months. On a cold, grey July morning in Adelaide, the work to recall Lazarus to life begins. Oh. 